friends welcome to this lecture on advanced design of steel structures course in this lecture we are going to learn two things we are going to understand what do we mean by form dominant design what is speciality about this form dominant design where are the applicable and when we do a form dominant design approach what will be the basic essential challenges which come in the design principles we we'll learn about that in this lecture we will also try to learn more about steel as an engineering material which you must have studied but we will see some classical advantages in connection to the form dominant design so friends this course is essentially open to multidisciplinary fraternity of civil structural engineering mechanical engineering offshore engineering naval architecture applied mechanics an aerospace engineering group both at the student and faculty level as well as for the practicing engineers we will do lot of solved examples numerical examples in this course we will also enable you to use matlab programs for solving the numerical examples we will help you how to write these matlab codes very quickly for specific application of numerical examples we will also touch upon a variety of international codal provisions applicable to design of steel structures so friends when we talk about advanced design where does the advancement comes from that's the first question which one would like to know so advancement essentially comes from the domains of analysis and design which are useful for both research and industrial practice let us quickly look at a glimpse of the course contents what we will be discussing under the title of this course in unit 1 we will briefly discuss about the form dominance and how it is influencing the design practices we will also talk about loads on engineering structures though we all know about the conventional loads which are acting on the engineering structures namely dead load live load wind load earthquake load etc we will pay attention to some special loads which are 
unconventional and not discussed in many of the course contents. We will talk about fire load. We will explain how to compute the blast and impact load. We will also talk about ice loads. These are special loads which will be of quite interesting to many of you will be attending these lectures because they are highly unconventional, but they act on heavy industrial structures and very less material is available in the literature which explains this numerical modeling of these loads and how to handle the structural design under these loads. We will also talk about the failure analysis. both in two dimensional and three dimensional stress states. What are the different failure theories and how these theories help to compute the failure load or the failure stress acting on a cross section under two dimensional and three dimensional stress states. Then we will also talk about material properties of steel. Both under normal temperature and high temperature because we are going to deal with the fire resistant design. Therefore, we must know the material properties of steel at higher temperature. We will also shortly discuss about the design codal provisions related to these codes and design methods. So, this will comprise unit 1 friends which will have a tutorials set of tutorials and few important takeaway questions. In the examination perspective as well as in learning and understanding perspective. The next unit will deal with the plastic behavior of structures. We will deal with plastic analysis and design. We will do lot of numerical examples to compute the plastic load carrying capacity of sections. Then we will also talk about the importance of shape factor of different cross sections then moment curvature relationships, then of course, theorems to estimate the collapse load in structures. In unit 3, we are going to focus on stability analysis. We will start with beams, column connections under axial tension and axial compression. We will also discuss about beam column design under elastic support then we will extend this to do 
stability analysis of frames we will use a classical stiffness approach we will derive the stability functions from the first principles we will also use matlab codes to estimate the buckling load or what we call otherwise as critical load in the next unit we are going to talk about unsymmetric bending we will also deal with curved beams with small and large initial curvatures in industrial structures design of crane hooks in fact choice of crane hook for a specific load carrying capacity plays a very important role so we will do analysis of crane hooks we will also use matlab codes to solve the problems of estimating load capacity of crane hooks or estimating critical stresses in the cross section of the crane hooks in the next unit we'll talk about column design phenomena where we will place emphasis on lateral buckling torsional buckling then we will also talk about the design of stiffness to take care of lateral torsional buckling we will discuss about lateral torsional buckling in open sections we will also solve examples of ltb from different codes we will take euro code example we will also take australian code example then we will discuss using indian code in the next unit we are going to talk about estimate of blast loads impact loads ice infested loads on arctic structures we will also talk about fire loads and we will touch upon the concept of fire resistant design we will also deal with design examples of large industrial structures offshore platforms and other special elements when we talk about material other than steel we are also going to introduce the advantage of functionally graded materials and their recent applications 
in offshore structures and other structural systems. So, what is an FGM? How FGM is manufactured? And what are the essential advantages of using FVM, FGM and their applications and limitations of using FGM? We will talk about this. So, friends, this course content has got many novel and advanced topics which will be very helpful for research as well as industrial practice purposes. So, let us join together to learn this course, understand the contents and pay attention to also get our self, self examined at the end of the course to earn a decent credit and a certificate from NPTEL. So, having said this, let us ask a question, why steel is considered as a very important construction material? You are coming to form dominance now. Okay? We know framed structures are very common or many industrial applications. The moment I say framed structures, they are usually statically indeterminate. So, the degree of indeterminacy is imposed on the structural system by two ways. One, from the supports or support conditions. Two, arrangement of members. Friends, the moment I say arrangement of members, there is always a concept of geometric form playing a role here. I am sure all of you will know what is called as a statically indeterminate structure. The degree of indeterminacy otherwise referred as redundancy enables higher load carrying capacity of the system which we have studied in conventional steel design of structures. So, the arrangement of members, the geometric layout of members what we call as a geometric form helps us to get this redundancy. So, the form dominant design is not a new concept, it is embedded in the design philosophy for the past many years which we have been learning in the classrooms and practicing in the industrial applications. We will talk about couple of simple examples to realize what is form dominance and where does it come from? The moment I say form, I am referring to geometric form. Okay? If I take a simply supported beam, subjected to uniform distributed load and try to draw the bending moment diagram and we all know the maximum bending moment will occur at the mid span which will be W L square by 8 where this is the load acting on the system and this is the span of the beam. So, to make it form dominant, let us replace this support system by a fixed support and apply the same intensity of load W over a span of L. If I now draw the bending moment diagram, this will have two components. I am superimposing both of them. One is of course, 
the simply supported bending moment diagram whose ordinate at the center will be W L square by 8. But this moment will be now compromised by a fixed moment at both the supports which is given by W L square by 12. So, the net effective bending moment at the mid span is now reduced because you know this is negative and this is positive. So, just by converting or changing the support from a simply supported system to a fixed support system, the net effective bending moment at the critical section is reduced. One can easily find out this reduction which is nothing but W L square by 8 minus W L square by 12 which will be W L square by 24 of 3 minus 2. So, I get a great reduction in the net bending moment at the critical section just by changing the support system. So, this is a very simple illustrative example to understand how a form dominance plays a role. Please note a great understanding in this example. One, in both the beams, If the cross section is same, then the moment capacity of the cross section is higher in the fixed case. On the other hand, the maximum bending moment at the critical section is lesser in the fixed case. Material is same, it can be concrete, it can be steel. Cross section is same, it can be rectangular, it can be I section, it can be a channel section. By keeping the cross section same, only by changing the support condition, which is one of the characteristics of form dominance, help us to decrease the effective bending stress at the cross section at the critical section or there is a reduction in bending moment. This concept is again not new. If I have a beam which is placed to carry a load which is uniform distributed, in olden days people replace this beam by an arch. And people understood, it was self explained in the literature that the configuration B carries more load or capable of carrying more load compared to the configuration A. When we talk about large span trusses, The bottom card members are not horizontal, but they are given a slight camber. This camber is given to counteract the deflection of the tie member. under self weight. So, the bottom members are lifted by a specific value, usually the camber is suggested as per the design provisions of different types of trusses, 
which are very common practice in industrial structures. So, form dominance which is used either to increase the load capacity or to control the deflection has been a practice in structural design which is not new. We are not going to talk about this form dominance. We are going to talk about form dominance on industrial structures which are applicable for oil and gas exploration. I will give a very simple example again. Let us say I have a oil platform which is essentially like a cube box. The box is not solid, it is hollow inside, but it is having a large size. When I place this box in water body, or the immersed volume of this object will improvise buoyancy force. So, I have a design concept which is a form dominant design. where the weight of the structural system is much lesser than the buoyancy. So, the buoyancy exceeds the weight. So, what will happen when you have a system where the buoyancy exceeds the weight? The system will have a flotation capacity, the system will have a free flotation capacity. Now, the difference between this buoyancy force and the weight has got to be nullified. This comes from an axial tensile cable which is connected to the system which is used to pull this body down and these are axially loaded cables which will be in pre-tension that is why I have marked tensile here. If you consider this as T naught which is acting downward, so W acting downward plus T naught acting downward should be now made equal to the buoyancy. Now, friends please note the load acting on the structure which will be a wave load, which will again be a wind load etcetera are not counteracted by the strength of the member. So, the load is not counteracted by the strength of the member it is not counteracted with the material strength, but counteracted by the geometric form. So, the geometric form helps the system to counteract the horizontal loads acting on the system. So, for such structural systems, steel is the most commonly preferred material being used. In industrial structures, the example what I am citing here is referred as tension leg platform, which is one of the classical offshore platform used for oil and gas exploration. So, friends, So, framed structures which have high degree of redundancy help to improve the load carrying capacity and decrease the stress concentration on critical members. While they are in service, the 
these structures are rarely subjected to accidents such as fire, blast, explosion, etc. But if they are subjected then the consequence is very severe. It will have a catastrophic effect and hence one should know how to estimate and how to design the structural system under these kinds of accidental loads. So, they will cause damage to the personal, to the asset and of course, to the environment. So, this should be avoided, this is not a desirable feature. Further, when they are subjected to accidental loads, under extreme conditions, we need to understand the elastic plastic design methods, which we will discuss in this course. The analysis and design of steel structures under extreme conditions and accidents is challenging. Not because they have non-linear aspects. It is because it invokes multiple physical process and multiple design criteria. that is important. The nonlinear structural response of such systems arise from two sources. The nonlinear response comes from two sources. It can come from geometry, which we call a geometric nonlinearity, which refers to buckling, large deformation, except can also come from material nonlinearity which we call as plasticity so we must know how to handle the design of steel structural systems under both nonlinear response categories for buckling and plastic loads which we will discussing in this course so friends Having said this, when we talk about strategic structures, for example, nuclear power plants, offshore structures, etcetera, they are capital intensive industry. So, the option given today to design a capital industry intensive structural systems is only steel. There is no other alternate material available and people never tried any material for strategic structures. There are many advances in design. The moment you say advances in design, it means efficiency 
and effectiveness and cost saving. Furthermore, the capital intensive industries like strategic structural systems are also vulnerable to economic slowdown. because of many reasons. One is they have a fixed overhead cost. The cost of plants, equipment, machinery and appurtenances are fixed and there is a significant depreciation of the assets. steel as a construction material justifies certain advantages. It has got a very high strength to weight ratio which justifies the choice of compact sections to carry high stress concentration loads. The second advantage could be the sturdy shape of cross section. This justifies effective use of the cross section. So, I am talking about a full utilization of material. Furthermore, it has a very low life cycle cost because steel construction is a rapid construction process. Considering this, as a rapid process, it can yield return on investment very fast. Therefore, the life cycle cost will be low. Furthermore, steel has got high toughness and ductility. This helps steel to withstand accidental loads and cyclic loads. Steel structural components become non-replaceable for certain applications. So, large span structures, offshore structures which are used for oil and gas exploration, cable state bridges where you cannot think of any alternate material except steel. However, when we talk about form dominant design, Then the foremost challenge comes in the form dominant design is stability. Of the structural system. It is one of the essential feature which should be ensured in form dominant design. Under extreme cases such as accidental loads and fire. Plastic design plays a very important role, but when you use a plastic design philosophy, though you say there is an effective use of material, but we have to also ensure the geometric stability of the system.
so friends in this lecture we learned few things we understood the importance of form dominant design from simple examples to offshore structural examples we have understood why steel is an important engineering material we have also understood and we are curious to learn about the accidental loads that can occur on cross sections such as fire blast loads explosion loads etc we understood that steel structures have many advantages the foremost advantage is return on investment is faster low life cycle cost high strength weight ratio and quick rapid mode of construction so having said and realize the importance of steel as a engineering material and realize that form dominant designs are generally facilitated with steel as a construction material it is very essential for us to learn the advanced analysis and design procedures that govern this kind of structural systems in detail so friends we come to the end of the lecture we have explained essentially the basic concepts of form dominance in this lecture we have given you an overview about what we will be covering in the entire course look into the npetel website you will have references which are very useful for this course of course matlab codes available to solve the numerical examples will also be given to you and we will do lot of numerical examples in the class to explain the concepts and we'll touch upon application of various international codes for design of steel structures thank you very much stay safe have a good day bye